I've been broke. I know what it's like to not eat. I know what it's like to not have hot water. I know what it's like to not have lights and having to, to light a bunch of candles so that I could pick out my clothes for school the next day. If I never had that struggle when I was younger, when I finally started to walk in the blessings that God was giving, giving me, I never want to go back. How are you? I'm great. So happy you are here Thank and we're you. able to chat. Yes. You are a phenomenal, aka a beast in the entertainment field. Thank you. In the arts, I mean, from singing to acting. When did you know that it was a path that you felt like you needed to follow? Wow. I, You know what? I honestly feel like when I felt like I was being led mm. there, there comes a point in your career where it's just like you have to. You know, it, it's not even a desire anymore um, as much as it is a calling or a pull. Mm. So how did you know? What what was that feeling that you knew was a calling and a pull? It's like this feeling in your chest that you get. Maybe it's your heart. I don't know what it is. It, maybe it's your spirit. It's a gumption. Whatever it is that you call it, it's like, it's almost like a magnet is pulling you to a place and then you get to that place and you feel peace mm. because you knew that you're supposed to be there. Yeah, that's good. And as we know, you are, you booked an amazing role on Glee. Yes. So if we could talk <laughs> about the Amber before you booked the role to the Amber of who you are now, um, because I just feel like we have this negative connotation or this proclivity as a culture to think, because the world knows you, you made it. And yeah. maybe you don't have to put the grind in or put the work in, or maybe, you know, things flow or things are different. What was that transition like for you? The Amber that auditioned for Glee, she's still in there. And, you know, I was 20 years old. I'm 36 now. That was 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a whole teenager since, <laughs> since I was on that show. It was exciting. It was a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. It was... Uh, something that I didn't know if I was ever going to make it to. It was a surprise. You know, it was my first audition back into the industry, mm. um, which let me know it was all God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was it was divine appointment. Um, but that girl was extremely insecure, very, very green in the industry, um, a raw talent and grew in that space to become someone that learned how to advocate for herself grew to become someone that understands like you are talented, you are beautiful, you're worthy, you're, you're, you deserve to be here, um, but you're gonna have to work your butt off. You really are because the spaces that you want to be in, most people will not make room for you. So you're gonna have to make room for yourself. And that's pretty much what I've been doing my whole entire career. So if it seems as though your confidence boosted and, you know, you kind of learned who you are. You're fighting for your worth, all those things. What if someone hasn't booked that role, but yet needs to build that confidence, needs to know who they are? What would that look like? What do you believe is a way forward for them to building that confidence in who they are, even if they haven't gotten that role yet? Oh, man. You know, the, the interesting thing about that is, is that's me sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I do feel overlooked in some spaces. I do feel like, God, the, the, that next big thing, because Glee was so amazing for my career. It was a catapult to my career. Yeah. And I've gone on to do, you know, awesome things after that. But the blessing and the curse of the business is you're only as, I guess, relevant as your last thing that you've done. You know what I'm saying? So what's next? And everyone's always asking, what's next? What's next? Even when you're in the middle of a project, people are asking, what are what's you doing next? Yeah. next? And um, the the blessing in that is that it keeps you driven and it keeps you focused. But the curse in that is you can, you can feel very overlooked and get down on yourself. And for me, I just always try to, you know, keep my faith and remember that my gift will make room for me. And not negating the fact that you have to work hard. 
Mm-hmm. And I think, um, and I'm not talking about Kim Kardashian work hard. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, not talking <laughs> about. I'm talking about the actual, you know, it's okay to know, to be on your grind. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Um, I, I, I just watched an amazing speech by Anjanou Ellis. Mm-hmm. And she talked about dark matter and mm-hmm. how scientifically, in, you know, dark matter, that's where things form. And she was talking about how she did so many projects that weren't celebrated. And she was being celebrated in that moment. Um, she said, I've done so many projects that weren't celebrated, but it fed my family. I've done so many projects that people may not have liked. And she was like, I, I have this movie with Will Smith, you know, now. I mean, I have another movie with Will Smith, mm-hmm. but I'm okay with working in the dark. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, I cried, girl. I was yeah. crying. I was crying during that speech because I do feel like I have been grinding in the dark. And we, and I think it's so important that you just brought that up of just grinding in the dark and working in the dark and being okay that you're maybe not being seen in that season that you're in. Because I feel like we, we have this propensity in the culture that we're in is to work to be seen, mm-hmm. not work to fulfill the purpose or the call that we are supposed to, supposed to fulfill, mm-hmm. you know, but we are just look at me or who's next. And I just think that that's such an encouraging word for people to hear that you don't have to be seen to be fulfilling your purpose. Yeah. And you have to change your perspective sometimes. Um, And I've had to do that. Like in the music industry, I'm a new artist. I'm a brand new artist in the music industry. Even though I've been singing and been in this business for almost 20 years, I still um, have to go to the studio and get the writers and get the producers and, 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 you know, turn in my tapes and try to get on playlists and go to the parties and rub the elbows and talk to this person about my music. Like it's a grind. Mm -hmm. It's a grind. But my perspective is I love what it is that I do. And I couldn't see myself doing anything else. And maybe I'm not, you know, singing at the Grammys or the iHeart Awards now, but Somebody has literally walked up to me and said, a moment has gets me through every morning. I was going through a depression and I play a moment and it's healing to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those that that should change your perspective of why you're doing what it is that you're doing. Yeah. What do you think the root cause is of us needing to be seen? You know, because of what you just said, your song got me through. If a million people heard your song, or just three, the purpose was fulfilled. What do you think that root is? Man, that's a whole (laughs) conversation right there. But, you know, I think, I don't think that the need for outside validation is wrong. I think it can become toxic. No man is an island and we need each other. We do need our people that are, you know, going to clap for us. We need that. We're little tinkerbells. We need our community. Yeah, we do. We need, we need our, we need our community. We need sometimes the, you know, those awards that you may get, the accolades that you may get, let you know that you're on the right path. I won an Olivier for um, playing F.E. White on the West End in the UK. And I was, when that happened to me, it was a, a time in my career where I was just like ready to give up. And I so I went to London, went to the UK, did Dream Girls on the West End, played Effie White, and got all these accolades. And it literally refueled me. And it's not necessarily the awards; it's the it's the the, the look in people's eyes that I, you know, someone after a show said I haven't cried in, in in ten years. And when you sang, and I'm telling you, I literally cried the rest of the show. Those moments that we pick at. Yeah. kind of let us know that we're on the right path. Yeah. Outside validation is fine. It just shouldn't be your bread and butter and your water. Great point. It's like we need that encouragement. Mm-hmm. But if that is the driving force that you're leaning on to have your identity, then you won't be disappointed. <laughs> you're going to be. That ain't that. You, you ain't going to make it. You're not going to make it. <laughs> you're not going to make Ooh, it. Oh, you're not going to make you know? it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, in 2019, I know that you went into a pretty deep depression. Mm-hmm. And um, in an interview, you shared so authentically and so beautifully that when you were going through it, your mother called it out and she was like, you're depressed. And you it seemed like you had a visceral reaction that, mm-hmm. no, I'm not. Why would I be? And your answer was, why would I be? I'm this. I have that. I've, you know, I booked these roles. I'm all these different things. And I think it's really important to highlight that because... Mm-hmm people in your position might not think 
that you struggle mentally with whatever it may be. What do you believe the root cause of that season was for you? And how did you get out of it? Oh man, there's there's so many, there are so many reasons why I feel like um yeah, so many people struggle with mental health. One, I know specifically in the black community, it's not something that is talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, we are not encouraged to unpack trauma. We're not encouraged to go to therapy. We're not encouraged to talk about issues or problems. And I think that's mainly because we haven't, it it seemed more of a privilege. And we didn't, you know, our our parents and grandparents didn't have the privilege to sit in their trauma. They had to take care of their kids. They had to, they're trying to get out the hood. They're trying to, you know, get it out the mud. Like they didn't really have that luxury. I love that this generation is, is taking the time to take care of their mental health Mm -hmm. and making it really important because it it really is yeah. you know i recently had a, a did this thing with a psychologist and a psychiatrist dr um amen dr uh dr oh, yeah. amen and dr Faber. yeah I know dr. um yeah so i got my my brain, brain scanned, scanned yep mm-hmm. and i they you know read it and kind of told me what was going on with my brain and the, tra- and the trauma and the things that we deal with when we're growing up and how it affects affects our brain I now realize why I was going through depression. And we just ignore it. We ignore the feelings because we're not taught to deal with our feelings. We're not taught to sit in our emotions. And so for me, you know, I had the kind of depression where it wasn't the crying and laying in bed all the time. It was the, I just don't care about anything. Mm, Like what? Like, I I don't care about how I I look. I don't care. I didn't care about anything. I didn't have I, nothing fulfilled me. No motivation. I had no motivation at all. People mm. don't even know that that's, that is depression. Everyone thinks depression is just crying in a corner. It's, I just sang in front of 10,000 people right now and I'm not feeling it. It didn't bring me joy at all. Mm. Or I just had joy in that moment and I got off stage. I felt empty inside. And there's so many different forms of it. So many different forms of it. So many. How do you feel like you got out of it? I think I I still deal with it. I still, you know, I still battle with depression. For me, I got on medication. I saw a therapist. My best friend is actually a mental health professional, and he really encouraged me, you know, to get into therapy. Um, And so I sought out therapy. I I talked to a psychiatrist. I fought them. I talked to my doctor. I fought them on getting on medication because there's such so much stigma around it. And it's so crazy because I think like 80 percent of Americans are on antidepressants. Right. Or anti-anxiety medication. It's extremely common. Mm-hmm. And we probably ask everyone that's in this house right now yeah. if they've ever been on medication. I guarantee you somebody is going to say yes. yes. Because it's extremely common. I talk about it openly because I want to take the stigma out of it. Because mm-hmm. if you need help, get help. Mm-hmm. Don't ask people what they feel about you taking medication. Don't mm-hmm. ask people what they think about it. Because if you need help, And you're talking to a mental health professional and a doctor. My psychiatrist literally said, I know that you're afraid to take medication. I'm Mm -hmm. afraid if you don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What other tools have have you been given to combat your depression? Honestly, uh, meditation is a big one for me. Music. I have a whole bag of tricks now because I've been in therapy for the past two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So now I have a whole bag of things that help me, you know, counter not get rid of, not ignore, but counter the feelings that I have. Not push under the rug. Deal We're not with denying it. it. Yeah. Learning that feelings are not facts, but that doesn't mean that they, they deserve to be ignored. I have to acknowledge them. Yeah. So it's music. It's music. It's meditation. It's prayer. Mm-hmm. It's um, any uh, therapist or you know psychologist that you talk to always says that having a faith really keeps people going. Whatever it is, your you know your faith base may be, you know having a faith in God, listening to worship music, talking, going out with my friends, you know changing my eating habits, working out, the eating habits, getting outside. Mm-hmm. Like you know, I learned that there are certain foods that just when when I would eat them and they make me feel sluggish and tired, that would make me feel depressed because. I just now feel like I don't want to do anything. I did not realize, I mean, obviously the whole saying, you are what you eat. But I think for me, when I feel overwhelmed or when I want to binge, I go to sugar. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, I'm just blah. Yeah. Nobody talked to me. I'm good. (laughs) I don't want to do any work. I'm irritated. You crashed. 
thank God for the education and that we are now in a culture where people are talking about it. But I wouldn't have thought that I, that's what caused that, Mm -hmm. you know, on top of all the other things. I mean, for me, I went through a deep, deep depression, but it was mother, like motherhood. And the first three months of having my daughter, she's 15 months now, girl. I mean, I I literally have postpartum depression. And it's hard for you guys to to talk about that because people want to, Oh, but for me, in a way, or make it seem like you're not supposed. You have a baby. Like, what are you? You know, yeah. Greatest joy of my life, but Mm -hmm. the heaviest weight. Yep. Yeah. The heaviest weight, and but I had to figure out. Okay, it's such a great blessing, Mm -hmm. but yet such a big weight. Okay, God, what do I do with this? How do I do this? You know, hormones are going out of whack. All those different things, but I had to get the tools. Yeah. And I still am in waves of it. Yeah. You know, I'm still in waves of. You As know, am I. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. Know. It comes and goes. And, and you know, that's a that's also an, an important thing for us to remember. There's no such thing as perpetual happiness. Mm-hmm. You know, when I had when I that's do good. mental health talks, I tell people you have to prepare for the ups as much as the downs. Come on. Because when you have a high up, you have to expect that down. Yes. And when that down comes, you got to know what, what, what it is that you're going to do to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that we've been and the transition and the opportunity to transition out of the old Mm -hmm. and to transition into the new. Mm -hmm. What do you believe you transition out of and that you have transitioned into? Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Because I know you've transitioned. Amber, you've transitioned. I think I've I've transitioned um, out of worry. Mm. And I think that I've transitioned into more of a faith walk. I've definitely transitioned out of complacency, I would say, mm-hmm. and uh, transitioned into really going for what it is that I want, mm-hmm. even if I fall flat on my face. How did you get out of the worry? Because we all deal with that, especially with the unknowns, the uncertainties. For me, I'm working on relinquishing control because I'm controlling, because I'm fearful, because I'm worried. How did you get out of that? I think I, I, I deal with it all the time. I think that I've just finally come to a point where it's like, prepare for what you can prepare for and then release what you can't. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, you, you, you don't know the outcome. Mm-hmm. You know, only God does. Mm-hmm. That's it. And like, always remember that your steps are ordered. Mm-hmm. You know, remember what the word says about you. Remember who God says that you are. You are a royal priesthood, my G. Like, that's what it's my G. Says. Mm-hmm. Like, you are loved. You know what I'm saying? And no one that loves you is going to let you fall. But you got to remember that. And mm-hmm. you have to walk in that. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah. You have to remind yourself. There's so many things around us. So many outside things around us that are always going to remind us who we aren't. Who we aren't. But when you know who you are on the inside, nobody can shake that. Mm-hmm. How did you get there? Oh, my goodness. I think... Um, making a lot of mistakes, you know, making bad decisions and learning from them. That's it. That's the one thing about about me that I've learned in meditation is to be a student of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Constantly the student. Yeah. And I think it's indicative of of God working everything for good, because Mm -hmm. for you to say the way that you got to your freedom and understanding who you are is through all of maybe the past that you've derailed. Yeah. That you didn't, you know, and then Absolutely. you're like, wait, hold up, what? <laughs> and it's like, no, this is a lesson learned. The problem turns into the promise. Mm-hmm. And always understanding, you know, remembering those times. And God always reminds me, like, I told you not to do that. And it's such a gentle, beautiful yes. parenting thing. You're a mother, so you yes. understand. And I, I know because of my mom. My mom's my best friend. Yes. That's my and you have a caregiver nature. Like yes, say. that's and that's my that's my my best friend. My mother. Mm-hmm. And mothers just have a touch. Mm-hmm. Okay, don't do that. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. And then they do it and fall. And it's like, okay, I told you not to do that, but I'm still gonna hold you. Yeah. While you cry. Yeah. You know, it's that same thing where God was like, I told you not to do that. But his grace. I told you not to do that. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Don't you did it. All mm-hmm. right. Well, now I'm gonna carry you over, but you're gonna have to feel this pain. Because if you wouldn't have touched what I told you not to touch. Amber, you're going. And if you wouldn't have done what I told you not to do, it's why a lot of people, you know, not to get into, you know, too much of this, you know, the spiritual, but like. When a lot of people blame God for stuff, I'm like, but were you praying and were you listening? Or did you just do and then you just expected him to pick up the slack? And that's what I, and that's just my personal 
yeah. experience. There's so many things that when I look back, I could have been pro- t- protected from. Yeah. Yeah. But I had to learn that lesson. I completely agree. And I want to ride that with you that I also believe that we think that God only orders sunshine. Mm-hmm. He sometimes orders the rain. Mm-hmm. He sometimes orders the rain. And sometimes, yes, we shouldn't have made that decision, but he allowed us to make that decision mm-hmm. so that he can do what he needs to do. Yeah. And us. To prepare us for our future. There's mm-hmm. so many, there's so many struggles that I had as a kid. So many struggles that I had as a child that I went through that have prepared me, that has prepared me for where I am now. I didn't act a fool when I got into Hollywood the way that others did because of the foundation that I came from. Mm. I can't lose this. I've been broke. I know what it's like to not eat. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to not have hot water. I know what it's like to not have lights and having to to light a bunch of candles for, for, you know, so that I could pick out my clothes for school the next day. I know what that's like. That's real. I can't go back to that. If I never had that struggle when I was younger, when I finally started to 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 walk in 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 an overflow and I started to walk in the blessings that God was giving giving me, I never want to go back. Come on. Yeah. And if I didn't have the experience of knowing what the lowest felt like, I would have no 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 healthy fear of it. Yeah. I would have no, which is respect. I respect which is reverence. The presi- it's reverence. Yeah. I respect the position that God put me in. Come on. Ooh, that's real. You go in there. That's real. And don't despise the small beginnings. At all. Do not. We need it all. Mm-hmm. We need it all. Every twist and turn, every nook and cranny, we need it all. Absolutely. You know? Well, lastly, here at Butta, we like to discuss, of course, all of the goods, the, the vitamin Cs, the cocoa, yes. butter, all, all of the things, the yes. butter baby. What And so that's for our external. What do you do um, to take care of your internal? Oh, gosh. Drink it. Drink water. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know people always laugh when I say that because I get asked that question a lot. But honestly, drinking water yeah. nourishes your whole entire body. Mm-hmm. Being mm-hmm. hydrated really yeah. does improve your mood. That's one thing my dad always say if I'm sick. Drink water. I'm yeah. like, it's not healthy. But it, <laughs> it, it is. It does. Yeah. It improves your mood. Um, I sleep. I get the proper rest. Good. I'll see y'all next time. I'm not going out tonight. At all. I didn't I went out last night. I'm getting my eight hours in tonight. Come on. I love y'all. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yes. Um, asleep. I dance. I will put on music in my room in a second and just mm. dance until I drop. Oh, I love it. I, you know, I hang around my family. They're my lifeline. Mm. Um, there's so many, so many, so many things. Good self-care. Your skin is glowing. You are Thank beautiful. You. Could you tell us what your favorite butter product is? Oh my God, I'm sure everyone's gonna say this. The vitamin C. Oh, everybody! It, it is, is my the vitamin C. C. It's my the, but I'm not gonna lie. My <laughs> husband has gone several times in my cabinet to. I'm like, why is this lower than it was supposed to be? It's so good. It's so good. The cocoa shea moisture is really great. Too. That's my second yeah. favorite. But to be, I'm not to not front like the cocoa shea has shifted the trajectory of my skin. I think just because I was so dry, the mm-hmm. moisture, mm-hmm. and then the vitamin C. It's like, oh, I have this glow. Yeah, the vitamin C. Literally, the first time I saw, I remember Dorian DM'd me. He was like, "Hey, I think you live by me. I'm gonna drop off some butter." And I was like, "Okay." He literally drove to my house and dropped off a box. And it was sitting in my room for a minute because I have a lot of beauty products. Sure. I am a, I'm so bad with the beauty products. Yes. And I finally, I was traveling and all of it was together. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to take all of it, you know, yes. with me. I love I, everything. Mm-hmm. The, the face wash, the moisturizer, the vitamin. When I finally used that vitamin C, I was like, why is my skin going? So That's a changer. It's a change. My makeup artist noticed it. Really? She and that's how you know. She's like, Emma, what are you using on your face? Do you use it morning and night or just morning? I use it in the morning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I wash and, and it's a, uh, uh, butter is like my morning routine. Got it. Mainly. Okay. That's My good. morning routine. And then I use the actual shea, shea butter like at night because it's heavier. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. Girl, I love that thing morning and night. <laughs> <laughs> morning and night. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> What's next? Oh man, um, music mm-hmm. for sure. Um, I've been in the studio a lot, and you know it's so, so cathartic for me. And I'm definitely gonna be giving some, some what they call it, uh, 
sad girl R and B. Ooh, <laughs> now okay, where where did the sad girl R and B come? I from? just love it. Was I, it? I love was it. it. Situ- is it situational? Is it, your writing situational? It is, and also I just love to tell the stories of my girlfriends. We sit and we have because they don't know that I'm doing this, but we do. We sit and have conversations, and like they'll tell me scenarios and you know things that are happening. And yeah, look this guy was trash. Like yeah. you know, and I go and I go in the studio and I write about it. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Uh, well, good luck to you. Thank you. Blessings to you. You Thank are you. such a beautiful, phenomenal woman inside and out. And I just wish all the best. Thank, Thank you, you for sitting down with me. Same to you. This was an amazing interview. Really good at what you did. Oh, right. thank you so much. That means a lot coming from you. Well done, sis. Thank you. So would you say if someone's watching that they want to maybe slow down but are fearful, what is one tool that you can give them? Break it down. Visibility. Uh, is this why you're doing it? Uh, money. Your needs, are, your needs are always met. Your needs are always met. Your needs are always met. You just have to be open to it coming in ways that you are not expecting. Your needs will always be met.